Hey, hey Jared. How's it going, man? Good to see you, buddy. Yeah. Hello. You guys ready to rock hound? Yeah, man. Okay, we're at rock hound. It's about to start. Let's get this going. Woo! Riding with Lance. Let's go. Rob, Scott, and Jamie. Yes, sir. Yeah. I pulled a number randomly out for rock hound, same as I ran at Romania. Oh, wait. Right. Yeah. Well, that is pretty cool. Right. Sir, look at all these bikes. Yeah, that Holy smokes. Rock Hound uh, is special for me because this is the first organized event I ever did, including races. So back in 18, is when I first got back into dirt biking, and the Rock Hound was the... Actually, I, me too. Yeah, I did silver. Yeah. And that was the first time that I felt like... And I remember doing silver and thinking, oh my god. <laughs> we just died on the side like 20 times. Well, I didn't even know you guys my first year doing it. You guys were ahead of me, and I got video of... Uh, one of the guys riding with you in front of me on Zachary's problem, looping his bike out. Yeah, it's always a good event. Yeah. It's a great show that they put on here. We've got all range of riders, ability. I see like the best of the best here. You've got Jared Donker up there I saw. Uh, uh, Aaron Henry's here. Really good riders. Uh, and then you've got people who are just getting into the sport and everyone in between. So never disappointed. What's interesting about this year is it's usually very, very hot and very dusty, but uh, we're at a reasonable temperature. Rockhound 2023, getting out of the quarry, crossing over Highway 41 into the first section, Chapman's Passage, that always starts with this big water crossing. This year it wasn't as deep as previous years, or maybe it was just lack of congestion, but I remember in previous years a lot of people getting held up there. Uh, this year was nice, it, it was a really good temperature, there wasn't the dust and heat that we're used to with the Rockhound rides. Instead, we got this beautiful chocolate cake dirt, kept the dust down, especially on roads like this where you're flying along, you don't want that dust in front of you um, coming up into the trails. Uh, this one here is Logger's uh, Breakfast, and this one was a neat one. So there's a big bottle, this is our first bottleneck, and Lance here roosts me um, behind Lance Webb, who I was over in Romaniacs with Lance, did a really good job and finished uh, bronze this year, the second year in a row doing that with Scott Thornton, um, headed over there with a few other guys, Chris, Tony, Ishtar, um, and we all had a great time. But Lance, uh, it was nice to ride with him again after Romaniacs. We didn't really get to ride at all um, in Romaniacs. We didn't see each other much. He was way up ahead in bronze and I was back uh, in silver trying to survive, so we didn't cross paths too much. Now this section here is actually really interesting. This is called the chopping block, and this used to be the pathway into Miami Beach. Um, but now, um, because of that major storm that came in, that just decimated the force up there, Lee and his volunteers went in and did an unimaginable amount of work. You can see all these logs. It must be $500 worth of chainsaw gas, probably more. Uh, just getting through and being able to navigate, but they made this amazing trail. It's surreal because you're going through logs everywhere, and it's perfectly cut because uh, you're not going to be able to get in there with ATVs and destroy it. Well, not easily anyway. They'd have to bring chainsaws. Just perfect width for, for dirt bikes to get through, and this cuts open into what was Miami Beach, and we'll be coming into that in a second. But this was a really cool section. Not only were there um, really cool features of getting through these logs. It was actually really tough terrain. Uh, some pivot turns that you had to navigate, twists uh, up and down, and I was really surprised just how good and difficult this section was. I, as you can see, I got hung up a couple times. I think I underestimated it. Some good hill climbs coming out into a mud wow. crossing. There's Lance again. I'm going to avoid getting roosted by him again. Um, and over to the left, because I found it was a bit of a drier line. There's Rob, Moto uh, Valley Enduro. Um, people I was riding with this year at Rockhound, uh, Rob Girard, who's uh, Moto Valley Enduro on his channel, also president of the OFTR. 
uh, Lance Webb, uh, my good buddy Jamie Young, he was there, ultra fast guy that I raced with in Vet Expert, and uh, a new uh, member to the group, uh, Scott, and uh, Scott was someone I met at the, one of the Kraken rides, and he um, was hoping to come ride with us, and thankfully he was able to make it to this. So here we are now coming out onto Miami Beach, and for those of you who did this the last year, there's this big hill with the, uh, the hero line and the good line and then the meh line to the left. So um, my buddy George, good to see him. So needless to say, try to send it up the uh, hero line. And uh, I was pretty happy with this attempt, made it right up. And then there's this log right in the middle, which is kind of awkward. So I had to kind of stop and pivot around to another way around it. And uh, I went to do it again and I actually uh, had a crazy uh, flip on it <laughs> so I, but sadly I didn't get it on video uh, but it was in my buddy Jamie too there goes Rob right up nice line I think that was his second attempt everyone ended up getting it um, some on their first some on their second but um, it was a it was a great uh, great run up there that's always a fun one now we're heading out from Miami Beach into a newer section called uh, Daytona Beach yeah I think it's called Daytona Beach and this one uh, again, highly technical, lots of ups and downs. And uh, last year we came from it the other way and came into Miami Beach. This year we um, are going the opposite way into Di Daytona Beach. And I actually like this flow a little bit better than last year. I liked it last year as well. It was a really nice hill climb, but this seemed to be using the features more of the up and down doing it from, from this way. So there's a lot of kind of pivots, log crossings like that. You got to jump over some logs um, and some nice rock. It comes out into these beautiful vistas. Um, lots of rock everywhere. And then when it finishes, you're kind of traversing along this cliff, as you can see on your left. And it comes out to this beautiful view where there's a lot of campers that will just um, come and, and camp. I think it's Crown Land, so they just come and enjoy themselves. You'll see in a second as we're passing through, but beautiful views. I love, this is easily one of my favorite trails in the province is this new Daytona Beach section. Well done. Spent a bit of time here enjoying the view. Um, edited so you don't have to enjoy it for the same amount of time, but uh, Jamie right there, we're heading back, back onto the trail, finishing up what is uh, called Daytona Beach. And here you can see where all those campers are. And uh, Lee went ahead of time and just informed everyone who is gonna be camping there that we're coming. He kind of exits uh, on this this rock rock garden step up. You just gotta head up right up through there. It's, it's a bit bigger than what it looks like in the GoPro as with all things. And traverse along, come out into another beach section, and then back into the trails. Everyone enjoying the beach and the entertainment of dirt bikers coming along the water. There's Jamie jumping over the rock. Rob. And now we are heading into um, another section uh, that used to be called Bushwhack, but now um, it's referred to um, Boiling Kettle because now the trails are carved out a little bit, so it's not that much of a bushwhack. Although there were moments, uh, I think you could still safely go with the bushwhack. Um, but actually, sorry, before we did that, uh, we ended up hitting... Wait, did we? Yes, so that's Boiling Kettle. And then this now is Electric Line Loop. This is Electric Line Loop that's kind of a big loop that goes right around Whitefish Lake. And it's a lot of double track, a lot of water, a lot of rocks. It's, it's a fun trail. It's not sort of your technical single track, but you can, um, if you're careful, you can get some good speed and good jumps like Rob hitting that thing there. Uh, him and I were just chasing each other down. That was a lot of fun. It was a, a really fun scenic trail to be, to be going through. And you can skip this one quite easily, but we did it. We tried to do all the sections that uh, Lee carved out on the gold line. And we did end up doing them all with the exception, well, not really, we did it all, but there was one part that we should have dropped down into, and that was the river on Blacktop. 
blacktop highway or two lane blacktop it's called we missed the cutoff turning down into it so the last hundred feet or so uh we didn't we didn't end up doing we we just didn't think it was worthwhile to go back so now we're finishing up electric line loop and once you've done that there's another little section um that you, you, you carve into in the single track here, turn left. And then now this is something called um, high voltage part one and then part two. And that, both of these are demanding single track. I think they are still in bronze, but they're probably one of the more uh, difficult, more challenging rides of bronze, as I recall. And after these uh, high voltage part one, high voltage part two, you end up coming out to lunch to enjoy some delicious beef tacos this year. That was, that was really impressive. I, the previous year has been pasta, which I've always enjoyed, but uh, I have to say the beef tacos were, were really good. I, I enjoyed them more than the pasta. Jamie waiting up, heading down through. This is now the second part of high voltage. You're crossing over. The reason they call it high voltage, obviously, is you look to the right, you can see the power lines. So you're just kind of crossing back and forth through the power line. So this is now the second part of it. And this is where you finish off the torch. You can see uh, all the lunch and Red Bull signs there in the background. We come through, quick gas stop, fill our bikes up, put in about 50K at this point in time. And I was just playing around on this rock after I finished my talk. I was just kind of up and down. Um, Lance was uh, doing a podcast episode for uh, uh, a Valley Rally podcast. Um, and so um, uh, he was doing that. We were just kind of playing around waiting for him. And there goes Lance. He's heading in. Now we are heading into Up, Up, and Away. This is these big rocks that you fire up, 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 and Away. There's kind of continues along these power lines and then you carve into the right uh, into what is um, described as the hardest problem the five out of five the Zachary's problem uh, we're still on up up and away here those are the, the big sends there and Zachary's problem uh, it's always been a favorite of mine it's, it's definitely the most challenging you've got some big downhills big uphills um, very technical and this year, for, for whatever reason, it was actually harder than I remember it in previous years. Uh, it just seemed to be a bit more chewed out, and, and not in a bad way. It just made it more challenging, like this traversal. In the past, it had a nice trail going up, and it's still a, a great trail. It's just, it's just a bit harder to navigate because some of the rocks have been carved out and made it a bit gnarlier. So that's a good thing. This is a gold class, only five out of five. So it's uh, the harder the better as far as I'm concerned. Whoa! Passing those guys, the two guys on the Sherco that we would see throughout the day back and forth, some younger guys. There's Rob with the big wheelie to completion. Scott ended up uh, having a chain problem here. His chain came off, so we had to fix that. Wheeled his chain back on midway through that, that difficult traversal. But we got it back on. Scott got back up the traversal, no problem. And then we continued on our way. There you go. Chasing down the Sherpa boys. All clear. Couldn't push me? No. <laughs> I gave you, I was giving you emotional support. <laughs> I'm saving the pushing for when it really matters. A lot of this type of terrain in Zach's problem. Uh, this is one of the bigger um, hill climbs here. It's not particularly steep or particularly long, but there's boulders everywhere that make it challenging. You really have to keep your momentum up because if you don't and you get kicked, then uh, you're kind of stuck probably in some sort of boulder trap. So I had a bit of experience doing this one a few times, so I kind of knew I had to just throttle it up and go, and, and 
that seemed to work well. Made it up without any incident. I was running um, a Gnarly, a brand new Kenda Gnarly with uh, soft moose in the rear, so big 140 tire, which is great for this sort of stuff. Uh, challenging terrain, just wide footprint, sort of presses it and, and melts over any type of rock. That's great. Oh, yeah. Lance heading along. And I'm just getting up this last section of that big, difficult hill. Now you can see on the left, there's quite a cliff on the, the side. And then it comes around, and then this is the big downhill that everyone talks here. My goal this year was to do it without any dabs. So my feet are on the pegs. And much to my surprise, I was able to make it all the way down without touching one. So I was quite happy with that. One of the the few things I did um, that I wanted to this this rock out. Oh, yeah. Everything else no seemed gosh. to have a few hiccups, but this one went well. So all the way down this big downhill, right to the end, and then you know, as as you know, as you go down, you got to come back up. So right after this is the final climb out, and um, unfortunately I, I missed that. But it, there were some big ruts in it this year, so it made it a very short run up to the final climb out. And quite challenging again. So Zach's problem wasn't to be trifled with this year. It was a good, it was a good, uh, difficult section to get through. This is the the water crossing uh, as you come out. Uh, that now you're heading towards uh, dry feet and two lane blacktop. And the reason they call it dry feet is there's a really wet area that you kind of have to go up and around, traverse around, and uh, Lee and Rally Connects ended up cutting uh, that out. So right now, we've already, like I said, we missed uh, two-lane blacktop. This is us heading into the confusion, which is this awesome hill climb. And I said to Lance, just go for it, and I'll try and follow behind you as quick as I can to get some good shots. So I did that, and I loved it so much that I convinced Rob to go back down and, and do it again with me. So we went went back down and, and did it all over again. It was a lot of fun. I could spend hours on this hill just sending it up in. Shooting with um, GoPro 11 and the settings I've been using lately, which seem to be working well, is um, 5K full frame. Oh, this is Rob on a. He, some guy was just completely checked out. He'd had enough, and he was on his adventure bike, trying to get out of this last section. He was just giving up on life. So Rob offered to take his bike up, and he got it up with a couple, a couple get offs. But he made it up, and the guy was so appreciative. He was hugging Rob and everything, just as happy as can be that he could finally get on the road and and go home. But kudos to him. He was. That's impressive to get up a lot of that stuff on that, that adventure bike. So I was saying, I shoot now um, a lot of these runs in 5K full frame on the GoPro 11. And the reason that's nice is you can use the videos for vertical. So if you're doing Instagram reels, but, but it also comes out in a way that you can adjust it. So if you want, a, like a, if you're doing a hill climb, then you might want to move the frame so that more of the sky is captured. If you're doing a downhill, you might want to adjust it so that it's facing more on your bike so you can capture more of the downhill. It gives you a lot of versatility and the quality seems to be really nice this way. So full frame, 24 frames per second is what I shoot in. And um, yeah, hopefully you guys uh, like the view that, that this perspective gives. And you're welcome to offer your comments below. I don't run the... Um, the GoPro on my chin because it just gets caught up in wires and I just find it to be quite dangerous. This is uh, me chasing Rob uh, who's now passed me through this section called the Taste of Sibiu and this is a really fun section. I got held up and Rob went flying by me so now I'm trying to hunt him down and I couldn't catch him. He's, he's flying through this thing. And this now is a section in the second part of Taste of Sibiu called Black Mamba and this is a really fun section that you got to I kind of go through the creek bed, creek bed a little bit and a few technical sections to get through, some hill climbs, a big rock to jump over. And we came across a couple riders going the wrong way, but uh, thankfully we didn't crash into them. And 
Um, this and now we're getting kind of close. This is basically the last major section of the day for the golds. There's that final hop over. And then what we did is we ended up doing one final uh, quick, quick run. This is still taste of Sibiu, but after this you get on the road and travel along and head back to Logger's Breakfast and do it in reverse. And then, then that's your last, your last section. So this now is Logger's Breakfast in reverse. And Rob and I were just kind of having fun as fast as we could. Make that Trying to catch each other. It's a good time. So there you have it. There's the 2023 Rock Hound. Final thoughts. Is in my opinion, it was the best Rock Hound I've been to yet, and I've been. I think this is my fifth one. I really enjoyed it. And if you haven't done this ride, I strongly recommend it. I'll probably be there again next year because uh, it's it's always a good time. And the crew from Rally Connects and Lee does uh, a great job in making sure that everyone, no matter what your ability, beginner, intermediate, advanced, pro, you're going to have a good day uh, out on the trails in Cloyne. Thanks for watching. Appreciate if you could like and subscribe and I'll make sure to bring you a lot more videos and tours like this. Rolling.